buckle up because we're diving deep into the European rocketry challenge, EuroC, as the insiders call it. Mm -hmm. We're talking student built rockets, like seriously next level. Yeah, way beyond your backyard stuff. It's amazing what these students can do. Right. And the ingenuity is off the charts. Absolutely. But here's the thing that really struck me. All that power. They take safety seriously. Oh, for sure. We're talking a serious rule book, dense, detailed, everything geared towards making these launches safe. And I mean safe. As yeah. impressive as these launches look, that's by design. Yeah. And that's where the rule book comes in, right? It's a beast. Yeah. Lucky for us, we've got our expert to unpack it. Happy to be here. Honestly, when you dig into this stuff, the thought that goes into this, yeah. it's really something. No kidding. Okay. So let's start basic. The non-toxic propellants rule. Seems straightforward, yeah? Don't want students messing with dangerous chemicals. It makes sense on the surface, yeah, but it's actually way more than just protecting the students themselves. Think about it. If you were using seriously toxic fuels, you'd need what? Special facilities? Gear. The whole shebang. Oh, right. Makes it a whole different ball game. Exactly. This way, any school can participate. Doesn't matter what their budget is. Everyone's on a level playing field and it's safe. So it's as much about accessibility as pure safety. That's really interesting. I've got to admit, though, it makes those sugar rockets you see online look kind of quaint now, huh? They do have a certain charm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's just say I've had my own moments with propellants. A little more memorable than plain old sugar, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Let me tell you, good ventilation. You learn to appreciate that. A lot. Hold on, hold on. You can't just drop that and not elaborate. Give us the story. The juiciest propellant mishap you've got. Eh, some things are best left to the imagination. Maybe another time. All right, all right. You've piqued our curiosity. But moving on from potentially hazardous concoctions, let's talk about a word that pops up everywhere in this rule book. Redundancy. Backup electronics for recovery systems. Dual deployment parachutes. They even want a physical safety key and a separate power cutoff for the launch control. It's like they're expecting things to go wrong. And that's exactly the point. You got to remember, for these students, this is it, right? Years of work riding on this one launch. Now imagine if one tiny thing goes wrong without backups, that rocket's gone. The data, useless. Years of work, poof, up in smoke. Wow. It's that whole spare tire analogy, right? You exactly. hope you never need it, but man, are you glad you got it when things go south. Exactly. Speaking of things going wrong on the way down... Let's talk parachutes. What's with the rule that the main and drogue chutes have to be visually distinct? What is it just aesthetics? Nope, not at all. This is actually a really good example of a rule that's got like layers of safety built in. First off, think about the teams. They're the ones you got to find that rocket after it lands. Ever try finding anything in dense widths? I can imagine. Exactly. A bright orange parachute. Way easier to spot than one that blends right into the trees. Makes sense. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? It's not just about finding the rocket, right? Bingo. Think about the people on the ground. Spectators, the recovery crews. They need to see where that parachute is. Keeps everyone clear. Avoids accidents. So it's not just about recovering the rocket itself. It's about preventing a whole other set of problems entirely. Honestly, reading through all this, it's clear they've thought of everything. And I mean everything everything but nothing and i mean nothing blew my mind quite like this they actually design a part of the rocket to explode on purpose who thinks like that sounds kind of crazy right yeah but honestly it's brilliant these burst discs they're talking about perfect example of a controlled failure point you mean like a controlled explosion pretty much okay picture this you're bringing got your pressure cooker going maybe some soup right uh. now what if that pressure cooker didn't have that little vent you know, to let the steam out as it builds up could get messy. Okay, you're going to make me scared of my own kitchen now. My cooking skills are questionable enough as it is, but yeah, point taken. Better little controlled release than a full-blown kitchen disaster. Exactly. And that's basically what this burst disc does. It's calibrated to rupture, right? But at a lower pressure than what the tank can actually handle before it, you know, really goes. So if something goes wonky with the pressure inside, boom, burst disc goes first, releases the energy safely, no big kaboom. So it's like a sacrificial lamb takes the hit for the team, so to speak. Exactly. Saves the whole rocket. And you better believe the EuroC is meticulous about how those discs are designed and tested. Oh, I bet. We're talking serious specs, right? You're telling me. Materials, manufacturing, even how they're marked. Everything's got to be just right. Because remember, these are students, yeah. But we're not talking amateur hour when it comes to safety. Which kind of brings us to what I'm starting to think is the EuroC motto. Test as you fly, 
fly as you test. They are serious about testing every step of the way. From what I've seen, they're looking at everything, individual components all the way to the final launch. Well, think about it. They're building these complex machines and they're still learning. Then they're sending them hundreds of feet up. You want to make sure things go right. Rigorous testing. That's the only way to be sure. So it's more than just, hey, let's build a rocket. It's about building good habits, good engineering practices. You got to think about everything, the fuel, the placement of a sensor, everything matters. Exactly. <laughs> At this level, even the smallest thing can be a big deal. And speaking of sensors, these rockets have some serious tracking tech on board, right? Oh, absolutely. In fact, all the competing rockets, they have to use CATS Vega flight computers. It's mandated. CATS Vega. Okay, those aren't just some off-the-shelf gizmos, are they? No way. These flight computers are the real deal. We're talking altitude, speed, even the orientation of the rocket while mm -hmm. it's flying. It's like the brain of the whole operation. Yeah. Gives you crucial data for safety, analysis, the whole nine yards. And because everyone's using the same system, it keeps things fair, right? No one's got a leg up because they've got fancier equipment. Exactly. Plus, those CAT systems have recovery features, makes it a heck of a lot easier to find those rockets after they land. And that's huge, especially when you've got a whole bunch of rockets coming down in the same area. Don't want any mix-ups. Oh, man. Imagine the post-launch drama if someone accidentally grabs the wrong rocket. Talk about an awkward conversation. Okay, switching gears for a sec. Let's talk launch rails. Cool as these rockets are, they're not launching themselves, right? What's the rule book say about those? Oh, they've got that covered. And this is where you really see their commitment to making this thing accessible. Get this, the Euro C actually provides standardized launch rails to teams that can't, you know, build or transport their own. Whoa, seriously, that's amazing. Talk about going above and beyond. They really want everyone to have a shot. But even with standardized ones, I'm guessing there are still rules for those rails. Of course. It's all regulated. Angle, materials, even how the launch lugs on the rocket fit onto the rails. Everything matters when you want to keep things safe. And I'm guessing the teams that bring their own custom rails, they're under even more scrutiny, right? Oh yeah, they need detailed documentation, inspections, the works, it's intense. It's like a safety inspection on steroids. They're not messing around. And that's the point. Because when it comes to launching rockets, student or pro, there's no room for error. Safety has to come first. It's the bottom line. You can't you know, compromise on that. Not when you're dealing with this kind of power. You know, it'd be easy to listen to all of this and think, wow, the Euro C, they're all about rules, rules, rules. But that's not really it, is it? Not even close. Think of it more like they're setting up the rules so you can actually be creative safely. Right. It's like they're saying, go big, dream big, but, you know, don't blow yourself up. Exactly. It's all about respect. You know, respect the tech, respect what you're doing, but still keep that sense of wonder. That's where the magic happens. It's that balance. That's what makes this so cool. When you see these rockets launch, it's more than just the technical stuff. It's a whole mindset. Safety first. They're building the future one launch at a time. Couldn't have said it better myself. And here's something to think about as we wrap up our deep dive. We've talked a lot about how these rules, they protect everyone involved, the students, the people watching, even the equipment. But what about the bigger picture? We're talking about the next generation of engineers, scientists. What happens when this is how they learn? That's the real question, isn't it? It goes way beyond just rockets. Mm. This is about how we approach science and technology, period. It's about raising a generation that's not afraid to push boundaries, but they're doing it with their eyes wide open. Exactly. They've got the brilliance, the ambition, but they also get it. Their work has real world implications. Safety, ethics, it all matters. Couldn't agree more. Well said. Well, folks, it's time for us to power down from this incredible deep dive into the European Rocketry Challenge. Remember, it's not just about reaching for the stars, it's about getting there in one piece. Until next time.